right on this section of our second video still under reflection we are going to look at images formed with plane mirror images formed with plane mirror images formed with plane mirror now let's see what is our objective here the main objective here is that you are expected to be able to draw ray diagram ray diagram and locate position of the image produced by an object placed at a specified distance from a plane mirror. Right. This is the objective. Draw a ray diagram and locate the position of the image produced by an object placed at a specified distance from a plane mirror. Now, and state the state the characteristics the characteristics of the image two things you must be able to draw a ray diagram to locate the image position for an object which is at a specified distance from the mirror then you must also characterize the image characterize the image now I'm going to start by a diagram. We go straight to what we are discussing. Let's suppose we have a mirror here. I'm locating it vertically. Now let's suppose uh, this is going to be my horizontal. Let's suppose that I have an object at this position. I'm going to call it, to put it as a dot, my object. And this is the back of the mirror. This is the back of the mirror. And this is the reflective surface. And this is the, the back part of the mirror. Now, this object. Now, a light ray can strike the mirror at that point of instance here. Now, and then it's a reflected in this direction. Now, the reflection is in such a way that, check, it must always fulfill the angle, the law of reflection. Always. If this is my normal, then this is my angle of reflection. This is my angle of incident. Now, if I were to put an eye at this position, I put an eye there, here. This is an observer who is observing this object. This ray comes from this is the object and it strikes the mirror and it's 
it gets into the eye of the observer. Now, according to the observer, he doesn't see this light coming from this object, but he sees it coming from a straight line somewhere behind the mirror. He doesn't see it coming from here, but from somewhere behind the mirror in a straight line. Now, if a ray, if a ray goes and strikes the mirror perpendicularly, it is reflected backwards along the same path. But if we project backwards, backwards, then where the two projected rays meet, this is a projected ray, this is a projected ray, we are extending them behind the mirror. Where they meet, this is where we have our image being formed. Now you'll find that this, let's call it D0, that is object distance from the mirror. And this one, we can call it DI, image distance from the mirror. So in this manner, you find that DI is equals to D0 in magnitude, of course. Right. So what the eye, the observer sees, is an image at this point behind the mirror. An image behind the mirror at this point. And it will be at the same distance from the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. So this is the ray tracing of an object image in a plane mirror. This is our plane mirror. This is our plane mirror. This is the ray tracing that happens in a plane mirror. And so that we can locate our image here from an object placed at a specific distance from the mirror itself. So we locate the image using the extended rays. These are the extended rays behind the mirror. Where the extended ray rays converge, then we have the location of our image at that point. Now, this can happen. This you can do with uh, any, any object. You can do this with any object. For example, let's suppose I have a mirror here. Now, let's suppose you can have a person here who is watching himself in a mirror like that. And the person is standing like that in the mirror. Now, you may find that if he is observing himself, now then a ray from the top of his head will come to the mirror, reflects back into his eyes, like that. Reflects back into his eyes. Now, a ray from his foot can strike the mirror and it reflects into his eyes again like that. Right. So similarly, this guy, when he sees himself in the mirror, this ray, which is reflected, he sees it is coming from somewhere down here. And if you were to make another ray that strikes the mirror directly somewhere here and there, then you find that if you extend, then you will see here his foot. You will see his foot somewhere here. And similarly in the head again, you find that when he sees this one, he sees it is coming from somewhere there. But when you use the normal ray, 
that goes and strikes there and then you extend backwards they will meet somewhere here and so this whole region is going to be uh, the gentleman again like that so he sees himself in that manner so you can actually do ray tracing on any object and get its position for an object at a specified distance from the mirror right so these are just examples of how a plane mirror forms up an image okay so in brief let's look at properties properties of the image formed with a plane mirror properties of the image formed with a plane mirror now we say that one image is as far behind the mirror as the object is in front now second point is that image and object are of the same size magnification is one image is laterally inverted right so these are the characteristics which are found in the image formed with a plain mirror right when you are doing ray tracing of these diagrams you will observe it on your own right now let's look at the next point of discussion which is image formed with image formed with spherical mirror spherical mirrors right we saw the image formed by a plain mirror now we are going to briefly look at images formed with spherical mirrors right our objective let's call it objective 4 says you are expected to distinguish distinguish between convex and concave mirror this is our objective you must distinguish what is a convex mirror what is a concave mirror the two of them distinguish between them what this implies is that we have we are talking about types of mirrors here in terms of caved mirrors that is we are talking of types of caved mirrors types of caved mirrors and the types of caved mirrors we have are concave and convex we have two types concave and convex of course there are others which we are saying parabolic and so forth but we are not interested in studying them 
at this stage, this is not the scope of our interest. Right. So, let's look at these mirrors one by one. Now, one important aspect here is how the how light behaves when it strikes these mirrors. So let's look at the concave mirror. The concave mirror. Now it has a caved surface. It has a caved surface. which is actually part of a sec part of let's say uh, part of let's say the circumference the circumference of is sphere right so it's a section of this sphere actually we are taking a section of a sphere and making it a concave mirror we are making a mirror out of a section of a sphere now Okay, now a key property, a key property, a key property which is approximately, approximately satisfied by spherical mirrors. is the ability is the ability to focus a beam of light par to the optical axis to the optical axis this is one key property which is made use of in designing spherical mirrors. Right, remember optical axis, we studied it when we were looking at lenses and it's a line that passes through the center of the lens, we said, and maintains symmetry of the lens. Right, the same applies to a mirror. Now, diagrammatically we can say the concave, we can represent it by this caved section and this side is where the metal coating is. Metal coating on this side and this side is the reflective side reflective side now rays come in par to strike this side uh, of the mirror so these are incident incident light rays in this direction now at the center here sometimes it's called the vertex sometimes it's called the optical center this line is still the principal axis principal axis now it has 
this point which we call the focal point and another point which we call center of curvature. So this is principal axis or optical axis. Optical axis. So, so check, it has a focal point, it has a center of curvature. Now remember we said this forms a section of a sphere that would go around. So this section, if it were a sphere going around completely, then this would be the center of the sphere, the center of sphere. So we call it center of curvature, center of curvature. That is center of the sphere if we were to make a complete sphere of this section then this would be its center so the distance from c to optical center to optical center let's call it v for vertex the distance from c to v in other words cv is the radius of curvature the radius of curvature and f v is focal length focal length the same concept as we studied in lenses focal length of this concave lens right now check check we say for this concave lens sorry for this concave mirror it the edges the edges always bent always bent toward oncoming light always bent toward oncoming light that is this is how it bends the light is coming this way and it bends these are the edges these are the edges and these edges they bend towards the incoming light this is incoming light so this is a concave mirror a concave mirror right and check the reflective surface is also towards the incoming light and the non-reflective surface is away from the incoming light okay right we can also say the reflecting surface the reflecting surface check is on the inner surface it's on the inner surface of the sphere of the sphere remember we make the whole surface if we were making the inside of the sphere the reflecting surface so it's in the inner surface of the sphere right check and we say the mirror surface caves away it caves away from the viewer from the viewer or incoming light it caves away goes away the cave goes away from the incoming light right now so the if we can look at it again f the focal point and 
C, the center of curvature. They are both located, both located toward the incoming light. They are both located toward the incoming light. In other words, this side, you find the focal point, this side, this side, you find the focal point, and this side, you find the center of coverage. Both of these are located toward the incoming light. Right. So, this is one way of identifying a concave lens. Sorry, a concave mirror. Now, let's look at the convex mirror. The convex mirror. Convex mirror. Right. We can represent it diagrammatically again in this manner. Now check. It is still the section of a, a sphere. But this time, the inner surface is non-reflective. And the outer surface here, this is the reflective surface. And this one is non-reflective surface. Right. So light approaches in the same manner, like that. And at the center here, we still have our optical axis or principal axis, the same. And here, we still have our vertex at the here or optical center. But now, the focal point is now behind here and the center of curvature is here at the back. And the mirror receives light on this side. Right. So we can say then that the edges, the edges of the mirror, the edges of this mirror, always bent away from the incoming light. They always bend away from the incoming light. Right. The reflection takes place on the outer surface. Reflection takes place on the outer surface. On the outer surface. Now, the center, the center of mirror surface, mirror surface bulges out toward the incoming light, the incoming light. Right, this, it bulges towards the incoming light. You can see the center here of the length, the mirror bulges towards the incoming light. Now, and at the same time, you can see also that F and C are located away from the incoming light. From the incoming light. Right. So, this is the convex mirror. This is the convex mirror. And these are the characteristics 
of it. Okay. Now let's look. Let's look at how the law of reflection. How the law of reflection is valid. How the law of reflection is valid. Now, if we draw, if we draw, let's talk in this case, we have a convex mirror. Now, and let's suppose this is my optical axis. Now, and let's suppose that this is the center of curvature. Now, you will find that if I were to draw a straight line to the surface from the center of curvature, remember this becomes the radius of curvature. It's a radius of the sphere. Now, wherever it touches here, the circumference, it makes an angle of 90 degrees. So if I were to draw a tangent at that point, then this same line becomes my normal. So if I have a ray that comes and strikes this point, which is point of incidence, and this ray is parallel to the principal axis, it's going to be reflected in that direction such that the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Right. At this point, we can call it P. Right. So we have to draw a tangent here and that tangent then we draw a normal to that tangent and then we can draw our instant ray and a reflected ray and the two angles must be equal like that right so the law of reflection must be obeyed at the surface here, whenever light strikes this surface, the law must be complied with. All right. So we say, we say then that reflection occurs at surface. Reflection occurs at surface right the law of reflection the law of reflection still holds at each point at each point of the curve surface right you can always draw a surface tangent and erect a normal at that point on the surface where the light is incident as we have just shown in the diagram you can always do that this is this you can also do with the concave. Remember, this is convex, but you can also do it with the concave. This is convex mirror, which we have used to demonstrate this, but you can also do it with the uh, concave mirror. Right. Now, 
Let's look now at the next aspect, which is behavior. Behavior of light rays when they strike a mirror. Behavior of light rays when they strike a mirror. Right. Let's look at that. How do light rays behave when they strike a mirror? Uh, our objective, let's call it objective number five. Now, our objective is to draw rays para to the principal axis and locate the position locate the position of the principal focal point of each type of spherical mirror. Right. In other words, here we are trying to analyze the behavior of light rays when they strike a mirror. Now, our intention is we must locate the position of the principal focal point. In other words, we need to identify the focal point of the mirror using rays that are instant on the mirror and these rays are parallel rays which are instant on the mirror. So we must be able to use the parallel rays instant on the mirror to identify the focal point of the spherical mirror. This is the whole point. And this is for both convex and concave mirror. Right. Now, so as we look at that, we first define what we mean by parallel rays. What do we mean by parallel rays? These are light rays. These are light rays from, from a distant object. From a distant object. E.g., we can talk of the sun, etc. Right. Now, the law of reflection, law of reflection, is applied at each point, is applied at each point on the surface of the mirror. Right. On the surface of the mirror, where the rays are incident we apply the law of reflection on the surface where the rays are instant. Now, the rays are reflected. So, as to pass through the focal point. 
F. In front of the mirror. Right. Here we are talking of a concave mirror. Right. The rays, rays also may be reflected in such a way that they appear to come from a point behind the mirror. Right. In this case, this is in case of a convex mirror. The point is the focal point. Right. So, let's look at what happens. Let's start with concave mirror. Let's start with concave mirror. Now, in terms of concave mirror, let's shift this. Right. So, diagrammatically, let's suppose I have a concave mirror like this. And remember, we said this is a non reflective side. And then here I have my optical axis or principal axis. Right. This is my optical axis. Now, what we mean, what we were saying is that. When light rays come, they strike the mirror, like that. They come, but they are parallel to each other, or parallel to the optical axis, like that. They are parallel. Now, all of them, when they reflect, they do so in such a way that they have to pass through the focal point. This one reflects but passes through the focal point. And this one reflects and passes through the focal point. Like that. Right. The same applies down here if you have a ray parallel to the principal axis. It is also reflected passing through the focal point. And the same applies to this one. It's reflected passing through the focal point, like that. And this is our vertex, which is the optical center. And this is in case of the concave mirror. Right, so this is our focal point, and the focal point is where incident parallel rays come to focus. Incident parallel rays come to focus at the focal point. Right, so this is what happens in terms of a concave mirror. Now, suppose we have a convex mirror. Let's suppose if we have, in this case, a convex mirror, what happens? Now, if we have parallel rays, they come, the parallel rays come like that. They come and parallel rays, let's put also on this side, all parallel rays, they come. Now, you find that they are reflected in such a way that 
this is the focal point so when they reflect they appear to come from the focal point this one when it is reflected appears to come from this point and this one when it reflects it appears to come from the the same applies with each one of these each one of them each one of these ones like that they all appear to be coming from this point this is in terms of the convex mirror the convex mirror so this is the focal point in other words it's a virtual focal point because no rays really arrive at that point while in the concave mirror it's not a virtual focal point it's a real focal point because uh, real rays or rays of light or light actually passes through that point now church, this is our vertex this is our principal axis right so basically in terms of how light behaves when it strikes a concave and a convex mirror this is what happens right okay now we are going to look in the next part of our video about ray tracing for now on this part of the video we have just identified the mirrors which we are going to discuss in terms of image formation so we meet in the next video about uh, ray tracing